live or anything. It's just recording. Um, so it's just there and I'll edit whatever bits out. Um, but did you guys see the message that I sent on Discord about my notes? Not that you have to follow those or anything, but right. the, that was just like my ideas for today's topic. Yeah, uh, I think Brittany added some too, or Brit. Brit. going to have to practice distinguishing which one we are. Yes. Um, um, but it's, it's whatever you guys want to really throw in there, but I thought because it's uh christmas um we could talk about whatever history you guys know about the holidays in general um doesn't have to be specifically christmas but the general season is right. the holidays um and just understanding what it means today as an individual um and you know, understanding that there is a history to the holidays and context matters. And that, um, you know, even though the holidays generally, all holidays generally have some dark history, that's just, that's because it's been usurped. But that doesn't mean that what we practice as an individual within our own home has to be based around what ancient Satanists want it to be based around. Right. So um, that's, you know, people like people who are on two different spectrums there where they're like all about it or they're just throwing the entire baby out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I was thinking it's like, there's no real issue. Hey. hey she's frozen. Loading in, spawning in. <laughs> <laughs> she's, oh. she's doing something with Zoom too. So she's, she's testing in it. Out. In and out. <laughs> So that was my idea is just um, because I don't necessarily have any problem with people celebrating holidays in the way that they choose to and their own private fashions because it's about your um, internal and, you know, group, your mm -hmm. clan. And right. that's what it should be about, the focus of that, not about, you know, the consumerism shit and um, basically the weaponized version of it which is like using false care and empathy and like oh it's all about jesus and it's all about the baby <laughs> jesus and gifts and stuff like that you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> when it's it's not really about that or it shouldn't be about that today in 2023 right Those there she favorite. is yeah. oh, hey, <laughs> oh look at that hummingbird is beautiful oh thank you mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> hey Leslie. Hi. Yeah, I, I'm I'm on my phone because um I'm converting a video and it seems to be interfering a little bit with my getting on. So that's okay. I make it work. Yeah. Uh, so I'm already recording, so you know. Okay. Um, and I am testing recording. I mean, we I was testing it early with Brittany. Um, so this should work. Um so See what happens um but i'm also recording to see if it works on my choral program so we'll see which app works out better but i i thought about this this morning i'm like how are we gonna do this where it's not a nightmare so <laughs> hopefully the learning <laughs> so i was just um talking about well first so how has everybody been doing the last month? And um, what's new with the the three of you? I have been continuing at a, a really fast pace, like doing so much, you know, and then kind of uh, pushing through a lot of stuff. But I see an end in sight, a light at the end of the tunnel here where things will ease up a little bit. But yeah, been super busy. Good. Yay. Yeah. Yay to the light at the end of the tunnel. I <laughs> right, I know. Right? Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, I'm switching jobs personally, um, going from like hard labor to like a management position. So I've actually just had some downtime. Um, and yeah, we're just easing into things. It's feeling really reflective and I've just been kind of hermity for now. <laughs> good, good. Very good. I've been busy. Um, I missed last month. I've just been, I was sick actually. I just haven't been very well. And then life just, um, just a lot of madness that not everybody needs to hear about, I guess, but just, you know, how life can be just one thing on top of the other. So just been trying to deal and maintain and and keep some stillness throughout. So I told myself this week, I'm like, I'm going to definitely dedicate an hour. Come on. I could dedicate an hour with the ladies because it it is part of self-care I think for all of us to come together too and just that's what it's all about anyway so I was I was sad that I missed last time but here I am so it's good to be back yay glad you're here okay we all have lives yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. and and this is meant to be kind of a sort of casual meetup type of thing where the women who are and you know, hopefully other people can contact any of us, be like, oh, is there a way I can join the group? Um, and the Discord and Facebook page can be, or chat page can be shared freely. Um, but just the women who are really kind of tired of what's going on in the world and the story needs to be set straight about how it's just going to be. <laughs> to to put it as bluntly as possible Um, without that being not as like a toxic thing but as a generality that we need to bring back who we are as humanity so um, I was just talking about some of my thoughts about today's um, meeting we could talk about Um, The holidays as the general idea since, you know, that's here now. And to give people an idea about, (coughs) you know, what it, you know, just any history you guys kind of know yourself about it, what um, you kind of gleaned over your years of understanding and um, the understanding of what the context of this and the understanding of what we do as individuals um, throughout the holidays, personally, how we deal with this and, you know, the problems with either going all, I mean, cause it's like a pendulum, you know, there's no balance with this either. Nobody's coming in the middle and just going, okay, this is how I handle it. Like a normal person. You've got the one side where people are going all in And you've got the other side where people are just completely throwing the baby out with the bathwater because it's evil or whatever. And because there's so many crazy things going on, it's hard to kind of, it's, it's difficult to keep track of how people are just like mood swings. Like the internet is just basically mood swings. That's why I've been feeling hermity, honestly. And sorry, I've been fighting off a sneeze. It's like, here I come. Just kidding. And so (laughs) you see a funny face as I'm trying to not like sneeze into everything. That's Um, okay. Sneezes and coughs are allowed. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, I love the holiday season. Like, there's a part of it that just I remember that sense of wonder and fun. But yeah, sometimes I get a little overwhelmed with all of everything. And so we kind of just keep to ourselves for the most part, do it small. Um, You know, we bring in the modern tradition of some gifts over here. And then, um, well, personally, uh, I kind of like to follow Yule more so than like Christmas. But we try to blend the two together because we are, you know, in this day and age where everything is popularized um on every commercial we you know have christmas ads in october now Mm -hmm. to get ready for the big holiday season and so um yeah we do a little bit of that but 
just trying to coast through and take it easy this season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you, Brittany. I I feel like the winter solstice is sort of the most important piece where we're in the shortest days with the most darkness. And that I really feel that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me want to be more um in, at home. I want to slow down. I want to look more inward. I, I want to participate less with all the hubbub that's going out there. So what, what I feel called to do, which I think is the more kind of following nature more so, is the opposite of what like our cultural programming is, which is to get out there and go Black Friday shopping and look for deals. And stop, stop, shop. Yeah, deal with the traffic and the crowded stores. And I just dislike that so much. And I have become less participatory, <clears throat> you know, each year. But because I I was previously, I've never been super like decorate my house kind of person, but but my but having kids, I have given them, you know, that kind of typical Christmas experience. And I <clears throat> I did it somewhat because I had very fond memories of being a child, you know, and coming out on Christmas morning and feeling the magic of seeing the tree fully lit up and the presents underneath and <clears throat> and it was sort of a magical thing so i i always i wanted to recreate some of that for my kids at, and it ended up backfiring on me in a lot of ways because i created a much more materialistic and you know ritual than i really ever wanted to and so i've been over the years as i've become more conscious you know of that like started to back back away from the material aspects and trying to think about more about what is the real meaning you know what is what how can we come closer together as a family how can we mm -hmm. um show appreciation and love for each other how can we do more togetherness than maybe we don't do on our busy lives and you know <clears throat> so things like that yeah beautifully said i i think i agree with that for sure we have uh, of course i gave my kids the whole traditional and they're all my youngest is 14 and then I have a stepchild, but mine, like before I came into this home and moved back to Kansas City and all of it, of course we gave them the traditional and, and I'd agree with you that it backfired and, and they've turned into this, you know, the expectation of getting mm -hmm. uh, comes really strong, but it did come from that place of like, for me, it's nostalgic, right? Like I love mm -hmm. to see all those things and smell all the smells and cook all the foods and do all this stuff. So, and it only happens one time a year when it's like that. <laughs> right. So and it's so like extra like there's that too, where we have this societal time off. Everybody has this time mm -hmm. off and the breaks from school and all these things. And then, um, you know, you come to a place where all your family is still doing all the traditional stuff. And I, I had to step away from some of it because I, in the past, have always cooked. I'm a, I'm a cook. I've always cooked for everybody. And I went vegan. And and that kind of changed, like, coming in and cooking the turkey, you know, like, <laughs> I had to tell them, like, I, I'm not I'm not just not doing it anymore. And I'm not I'm really trying to figure out what it means to me and the family and the kids. <laughs> and two of my kids live kind of further away. So um they only come in in those times and so now where i'm at like when they do come in i, I want it to be more um about home and and hearth and 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 give something to them that might be nostalgic um mm -hmm. but we i was raised Jew like my dad did christmas and my mom did hanukkah so i did both of those things growing up so they're both very um <laughs> nostalgic for me and so but i'm i guess more inclined i just have a hanukkah and i like my hanukkah candles and i don't do anything christmas related at all in my home but i'll still like try to catch functions and go see family because that's when everybody is really all gathering together so doesn't that really mean that that's really what it is about i mean it really is about 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 a tribal it should be tribal you know, I hate that it has to be the societal thing that everybody's got the time off. We should just be tribal all the time. Yeah. But And this is one of the things I'd like to kind of put out there as a thing for people to consider instead of making it this like consume, consumerism holiday, which is what it is. It's a weaponized church and state uh, system that has, you know, taking something that is beautiful and turning it into something that is used against the people and this is where that problem lies i think like i myself i grew up 
you know, I guess kind of not really Christian. I mean, you could say my 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 mother was a single mother. She's, you know, maybe allergic to the church. Mm-hmm. So I kind of had that going in my favor where I wasn't just put into an indoctrination system that, you know, be in thing the concept of heaven and hell in me. So I was able to take in concepts of spirituality at least to in a way where I wasn't being held back by these like, oh, but what if? Blah blah blah. Eh. So but growing up, I mean, I can't we had a tree and my mom would decorate. And, um my mother would decorate and we would we had this tradition um where we didn't really go out and necessarily buy ornaments you know really a lot like w- like once a year we'd go out maybe buy an ornament or two or we'd make an ornament or two and that would be the add-on to the christmas tree and over the years um it built into a collection of what our family put together and i still have a lot of those ornaments <laughs> some that don't work anymore because it's like obsolete technology <laughs> and you, you can't make it do all the little things. But the idea is that it wasn't about, um, nest. I mean, you're a little kid, so you're like, Oh, presents. Yeah. You know, and there's that expectation as a kid because every other child, you know, around you, that's how, you know, the majority of people celebrate this holiday is it's, not a holiday about family necessarily. That's the external false persona. It's a holiday about um, consumerism and um, teaching people to want it now or want more or bigger or better. And so I kind of, I, I try to keep that that simple. I don't do a lot of Christmas. I don't decorate a lot for the holidays. Um, you know, mostly for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I might, you know, cook a turkey or something and some foods like that, because for me, it's kind of always been about food. And we've got a cool tree with a bunch of like, weird, odd, totally not Christmas ornaments on it, probably. (laughs) Um, Maybe a couple of gifts, you know, where we thought, oh, this person's really going to want this or like this thing. And You know, I mean, I I wouldn't end up spending all that much money, but it's kind of like it wasn't about that for us. So, um, I mean, when you're a kid, you kind of see it a little bit differently. But um, (laughs) I like the idea that the holidays, even though it has a very dark, dirty um, history that people should be very aware of, um, these ancient traditions that i mean it, it's just com- there's like so much fan fiction about what it actually is we should just take this back we should take this this season back because winter is a time for going inwards you know being still reevaluation rebirth you know conclusions all that kind of stuff so we should take it back and tr- as what we would like to see what this season is about today. And like, there's nothing stopping any of us from being like, you know what, I'm going to set the reset button on this and be like, we're not doing it like that anymore. We're going to do it how it works for the modern day in our families and in our communities and how we operate that through morality. Mm -hmm. So that was just, that's just my thoughts on it, though. Sure. Wait, so because my kids are away, but I only kind of see them in this time, I, I just kind of, I gather things through the year and I throw them in a little box that I have for each of them. It's just little things I see along the way that I think that they might like or little yeah. tidbits or memories or whatever. And then when they come to visit, it's not, I'm not wrapping anything. I, I try to stay away from the traditional, like you're here to get gifts, you know. Like, I'm trying to get away from that. I was really I'm trying to get away from it and keep it more like we're just together. You're coming so that we can be together and play games or whatever we're going to do. So, 
Mm -hmm. That's another one of those traditions with the presence, I guess, that I've I've tried to make a change with. It has not been an easy transition <laughs> because my kids are used to everything that I did before, you know, when they yeah. were younger. And Same here. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so I try to hold on to enough of it that they feel yeah. like their their nostalgia can be like continue in a way like that that because there is something to their memory of how it was and mm -hmm. grief around and not wanting it to change. You know, so right. I really try to respect that. At the same time, you know, my kids are getting older. My youngest is fifteen. Right. You know, and they're starting to have that intellectual understanding and perspective, mm -hmm. you know, around the cost of things and materialism and things like that. Sure. So that helps, right? I think most and, people do go through that all of a sudden Santa's not real, mm -hmm. right? Everybody goes mm -hmm. through that that change and having to try to figure it out and what is mm -hmm. the truth and how come dad does Christmas and never says Jesus and mom does Hanukkah and like I was a mess, but <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because for dad it wasn't about Jesus, it was just about materialism. So yeah. that's what the dad's side was. Yeah. And then mom was mm -hmm. trying to teach me about it and but now we're Jews and so it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so being having the kids old enough to be able that we can, I can talk about it with them in a new way is 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 a relief for me. Um, and I try to for myself if I'm as I'm doing things, I'm trying to see it from a perspective that I that I see as valuable. Like the tree for me represents the tree of life, and it's a very important symbol, and it it represents a lot of esoteric. Um, knowledge and it'll and it's can be a prompt you know to remember about our inner growth and our the way the life to to the mystery of life and the the return of the light you know the return of the sun the sun represents life and it's it's something to be grateful for to be grateful for our lives and the continued you know shining of the sun and and the coming um you know, we're often, you know, where I live, it's not crazy cold, but it gets kind of dark and it gets drizzly and rainy. And so we're all in this sort of little bit mood, you know, um, our moods are affected and it's a different energy. And we start to, people start to look forward to the light, to look forward to the return of the sun and the change in their mood. And, and it's really nice. I, I like to stay in touch with that right to to really notice the differences of what does it feel like during the winter what does it feel like in the spring you know and the summer and then how we get tired of the light and we're really looking forward to it getting darker again I and love just the balance to, of the season yeah too. to flow with it to me is what's is meaningful mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah I like how you tied in the symbolism to the tree that's really cool because um I guess I've kind of been in like a funny place of like making my own holiday because we actually um, didn't do Santa here because mm -hmm. um, I was just that that little kid who was crushed. And like my family has been very like, no, we're going to be honest. And then they lie about Santa. And I'm like, so what about this? And they're like, it's different because it's Santa. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, it's not. Like when I asked you, know, I was just really really upset and I was very logical yeah. as a kid. So I did things a little bit different and I came from a Christian background. Um, after I had my, my daughter, I, I had her at 20. So and I turned 21 three weeks later. So I was a very young mother. Um, I just had to kind of figure it out. I, I kind of, I don't want to say denounced Christianity, but I essentially stopped becoming Christian and I started exploring more pagan things. And so Christmas has kind of been like a mush between a little bit of Christian stuff, a um, bit of pagan stuff. I love to like play on like sense memory and smells like smells really just bring about feelings for me. So I love to get the apple cinnamon candles and uh, I've had to kind of figure out like how to do the holidays and what does it really mean to me and what is, what is actually important about that. And um, 
I do love love gathering with loved ones, no matter what that looks like. And we have a lot of different traditions, especially like in the United States. You know, we have we're um, a country that's like blended full of different kind of cultures and traditions. And we might have to figure out like a way to do the holidays that feels right for us. But um, it could look a little bit different. But I've been a, been in a funny spot of like having a splash of this and a splash of that. And I really liked <laughs> how you tied in the symbolism of the tree because that mm -hmm. that harmonizes with the animist in me and all that. So <laughs> For sure. And isn't isn't Christmas originally based on um, pagan practices? Sarah, didn't you do a little research? You have some things to share yeah. on that? Fertility. Um, I can read off a little bit of that here. Awesome. Um, that it was just some cursory and I, I am going to elaborate in an article as well that we can connect this to. But um, just to, to um, comment off what you were saying, I we did Santa when I was a kid too. And then when I found out the way I found out, I'm just like, well, that's a load of shit right there. <laughs> and so like when my daughter was born, <laughs> I also chose not to push the Santa mythology as it's pushed in our modern society. That being said, the actual Santa mythology, the real history of the of mythology, Saint Nick. Saint Nick is actually pretty you fascinating. That too. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> I did write up a little bit of something about some of the history. So I'll just read that off and then you guys can you guys can comment on that. So uh Or I even put it. <laughs> okay. So just the paragraph I wrote on that is um, Christmas in the modern world is used as a way to reconnect with people they care about, enjoy some downtime, and maybe give a few gifts. This holiday does have a very dark background. However, this holiday season is based on an ancient festival season called Saturnalia which is a high holiday for what is essentially ancient Satanists. Now, just, I didn't write this part in, but it's something that like our ancient, the ancient Romans celebrated and um, mainly them people, I believe. But it goes back even farther than that. This was, this was celebrated from December 17th to the 23rd of the Julian cal calendar. There's a lot of history that was taken place between then and now, so context is important. But the long story short, this holiday was eventually evolved into what we have today, where people actually go around thinking that Christmas is about Jesus and gifts. Keep in mind that Saturnalia is a dark holiday for Satanists. Explaining the symbolism is for another day, as this is an extensive topic. So this is something we can go into on another on another meeting that people might be interested in. I, cause it, it is pretty interesting that people, you know, I think people should know about this stuff. So then I wrote today, Christmas is a best time for thanks and gratitude and at work or Christmas is at best a time for thanks and gratitude. And at worst, a weaponized ploy to encourage false care and empathy, consumerism and to propagate a lie that this season was ever about the birth of true morality placed into the world and an idol to bow down to in hopes for salvation. So that was what I, some of my thoughts that I was writing um, and some of the history I pulled, just what I've been do doing so far. So um, if you have anything you would like to comment about that or add to it, or maybe even bring a counterpoint I'm all ears. I just want to add that <clears throat> that Saturnalia was an ancient. I'm looking it up right now. That it was an ancient Roman festival that originally yeah. was there to honor the agricultural god. And I think in its pagan animistic roots, there wasn't a dark side so much to it as much as it was around celebration of the solstice. The midwinter, you know, the midwinter and the solstice rituals related to farming. So there was a more practical and celebratory um, 
glad to be alive kind of, you know, um, neutral or celebratory spirit about it. And like most things with the dark occultists is they'll take something that has a neutral or positive uh, spirit to it and then corrupt it or invert it mm -hmm. and then use it to gather their energy and power where I think is that's why I think we have this consumerist emphasis so much is that we're kind of feeding the dark occultists, you know, with our giving spending all our money and getting all stressed out and you know let, sadly many many people at this time of year find it are unhappy they get depressed at the holidays they feel really isolated and alone they feel you know just overloaded overwhelmed families fight you know all these unresolved issues come up it's not always associated with with goodness and and there's sort of this hallmark card like image of how we're supposed to be you know, in the movies and things, all these families coming together. But in reality, a lot of times that's not happening. And so I think my point is that there's this um, inversion of something that was, all, that was you know, originally a, a good thing that then yeah. gets twisted in this sort of satanic way. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point to bring up because, yeah, like, that's the thing is that these people i'm sure it became inverted into this mess of like just basically this free-for-all debauchery when you had people who are basically essentially it's ancient satanists like whatever religion they decided to call it doesn't really matter it amounts to the same thing um and then they use again another thing that humanity naturally does on its own and that the planet does on its own and it inverts it into its own little weapon to use against that which would defy it. So that's a good point. And even there's a history of just that type of thing happening in the world where like, like all mythology, all legends, all of our history can be, um, like used as this like, you know, um, sounding board for like how we react either good or bad, if that makes sense, like, you know, so it makes sense that like everything that just was already here, you know, like Satanists aren't, or the, I should say, dark occult parasitic class is what I've been trying to call them <laughs> more so, but they're not creative people. So they do use inversion and they do take something, anything, and they invert it into their own will. So it makes sense that they would use even our seasons and do that. And then that's what it actually is. And maybe what we're talking about is like, we're taking back what it actually is supposed to be instead mm -hmm. of what they want it to be. Right, or what they're using to mask up, what they don't want people to know it is, you know. It's a right. huge facade. Like we don't want them to know about the real stuff. So yeah. let's come up with this really fun, exciting, buy everybody gift stuff. Mm. Yeah. I'm, and in this little um, summary that I that I got from the website that I did through generative AI, by the way, it says that it was they included things like wreaths and candles and gift giving. <laughs> putting up greenery, drinking and merrymaking, all the things that generally modern day Christmas is represented by. And so this holiday really was the source of many of the Christian traditions. And, you know, most modern sort of Christian folks who are celebrating Christmas are not really acknowledging that, you know, this blending of a pagan holiday with the the, the messaging of the Christian storyline of Jesus, you know, like melded together to basically get compliance in, among the Roman people. Mm -hmm. And that was a strategy. Mm -hmm. And um, But it's interesting that this one comment, it says, during Saturnalia, slaves were treated as equal. So first acknowledge there were the slaves. And on this special day, you know, they got to be treated as equals, you know, and they could relax and have fun. How how generous, right? 
Um, they were invited to eat with their masters and even serve themselves. Like it was most funny. They wore their finest clothes and were allowed to sit at the head of tables, you know. And I think to me, when I'm reading that, I'm like, it's another way of um, almost like mocking, um, our, our, you know, the the people that they were creating, you know, the holidays for. And we could see it a lot. Like we get days off for these state holidays. Like what a gift, right? We don't get to control our work days so much. We are still modern day slaves and we often just are so grateful for our our state given days off, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You took the words out of my mouth, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead and expand. Yeah. No, that's just what I was gonna say is you nailed it with with giving the slaves some time off. It's like, mm -hmm. we've talked about that very specifically, like almost begrudgingly, you know, the mockery, the mockery. And so I, so I come away from it completely on a lot of things. I, you know, I threw the baby mm -hmm. out with the bathwater. I'll admit it. Like I'm over it. I'm done. I've had so much. And then like, even then, like just the guilt of like, I, I taught my children how to do all this. And now I have to figure out how to like reverse all that and and come back and teach them anew but i'm so grateful for the opportunity to because you can't unsee or unknow or unlearn mm -hmm. but you just choose what you're going to do with that knowledge and not be in the ignorance um and that's kind of what i was thinking too you know i don't know much about the saturnalia or anything about that i learned the pagan tradition to be more of like what leslie was describing of you know, it's a time of gathering. Um, it's a time where the seasons are shifting and stuff like that. Um, but it really comes down to like what what we choose to do with things, you know, like I've been learning a lot of business and stuff like this and from different entrepreneurs this year. And <laughs> sometimes things are terrible, but sometimes things are great, right? Like, is it really somebody else, like a businessman's fault for seeing an opportunity to make money like if everybody's gonna like jump on the hook like fish you know maybe we need to look more internally like if we don't want this to be such a consumer driven holiday and that's a problem then we don't have to partake in that or maybe we can even find more balance where it's like okay well there's nothing wrong with giving gifts and stuff like that there's nothing wrong with doing things that you love for the people that you love but if it's way overboard and you're spending you know like your rent amount like in gifts like if you know if if you're going really extreme with the gifts maybe you can reevaluate that but i think the power really really is in here in us um of course you know people are trying to do things to sway the masses so to speak and in many ways it works but it only works because of people's conscious level of awareness, you know, and the more that we raise our consciousness, the more that we seek to take responsibility for our lives, our day to day lives, lives during the holidays, um, you know, the more we have control over our lives. And if more people this is uh, kind of how why why Mark says, you know, if we lived in a moral society, we wouldn't have issues going on. You know, the more power we take back in our day to day lives and the more that we address certain things, especially the things that bother us, um, the more I think that that is OK to be spread around, not even OK to be spread around. I just think it naturally will spread. You know, if if you approach things differently in your life and you share that with others, it's kind of like sometimes it's like a permission slip for others to say, hey, I really mm -hmm. like the way you think or, hey, I like that idea. I think I'm going to try that or, hey, I think I'm going to do something different, too. The yeah. more we kind of uh, take power back on situations like this in our lives, I think um, the more that will inspire others to do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So things yeah. are kind of out of balance now. I think that we we have um, a sense of control in it all and, yeah. and talking yeah. about things and, and I guess making it okay to communicate about such things. Yeah. It, uh, is a it all makes effect. a difference. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. It, it is a pay it forward. Like, like people will emulate how they see other people behave in their environment. And it's like sort of this subconscious pay it forward system. 
-hmm. but you're like totally right, Brittany. And it, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with giving gifts during the holidays, like, or when you just feel like giving a gift to somebody you care about because you felt just that you love hurt. Them and you think they'll like it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, I don't have any problem with that. Like, I think that's, okay. you know, nice. And that it is coming from a genuine point. But you're right where people need to find the balance within themselves where, um, for instance, several years ago, I'm reading on this like post or something online and people are just going crazy. It was like uh, maybe like 10 years ago or something like that. And people are freaking out because now you've got families who are complaining that they can't afford to give their kids what the other kids in the classroom can get, which all the richer kids mm -hmm. or the upper middle class kids are getting like PlayStations and iPhones and like thousand dollar tablets. And I um, mean, like the majority of the parents are like, well, my kids come into me saying that, well, Santa's going to bring me that stuff too, isn't he? It does create and unrealistic expectations for other kids. A lot of is. a lot of people who don't have a lot of money, their children think that <laughs> Santa doesn't visit the poor kids. Yeah. yeah. So and, you know, um, you know, that's another getting, reason why I didn't do the Santa either, because I just felt bad. We could still make the yeah. holiday magical without being dishonest and Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel that exact same way. It's like that's why I didn't want to do Santa with my kid because I understood that. I'm putting out an expectation and I mean, it, it also, even that in that situation, um, it, it should say a lot to people that, Oh crap. Yeah. We're not just like feeding into consumerism and this like idea about what Christmas is supposed to be. We're actually like, conditioning people and like mentally damaging people we're damaging our children by giving them these ideas that they should cling on to like you know one lady even came Lies. out and said, yeah, we're like, consenting to lying it is there's a moral and, line yeah this, one of the ladies who comments even says well i my kid writes this my kid's like 16 he writes to santa every year and santa meaning her writes him back mm -hmm. every year and i'm like 16 you, you said yeah this kid is like really 15, believe 15 16 years old i'm like do they really believe in it or is it just like a he must like if he's still writing thing? yeah i mean maybe he had like you know some form of like um autism or something like that and now i didn't ask about the private situation but mm -hmm. even that age is still too much even in that situation for most of those children. So like just starting it at all is kind of kind of causes this like psychological mm -hmm. problem within the kid because you're training the kid. But that's, you know, besides the point, like I just don't I don't think there's anything wrong with us giving gifts though. Right. So um, you know, like I would go and I'd spend, I don't know, a hundred bucks for Christmas on my kid and things I knew she would really want. Right. Or I would spur splurge on like a large item, like a laptop. And cause I knew this is not only something that she would like to have. She's old enough to use the responsibility. Like at this age, I think she was like 13. Um, she was ready for it. And it was something I knew she would appreciate and something that would be a good tool to get her to, learn how to deal with life mm -hmm. so uh, i i don't know i think i i think you all had really great <laughs> points that you brought up too well i think uh it's an opera like you're talking about where everybody it's an opportunity to um like you said Brittany, to share um and drop little seeds of kind of how we do it and um like my mother-in-law went through a thing where she was just like you know, the kids grow up and they grow apart and all your siblings go and live in different places. And then like, not a whole lot of times do we come back to the original, your parents' home in Hearth and be able to have that gathering thing. And so, 
in in those uh you know the the matriarchs and patriarchs or whatever our family are like they're like oh we don't all get together anymore so this year um and and for us for me personally it was a lot of like trying to get away from christmas i guess which they all still do so this year he said, well, well, let's get together, you know, and we picked a night and I'm like, why don't I'm going to come over. I'm going to light Hanukkah candles for you guys on night six, you know, <laughs> so I'm going to go over there and like show them. And they've recently found Jewish roots and they don't know anything about the tradition. Like none of their living relatives know anything about Judaism, really. So um, it's going to be neat just to go over and kind of show them how we how I grew up doing it and how how all of it works and what it means and what the holiday is actually about. And, yeah. and then, and then we get to have just that together time. It's not like, you know, so we get to kind of blend it all together, just like we're saying and do this thing. And then mom gets to have everybody kind of there too. So yeah. You bring, up, my, go ahead. yeah, you bring up a good point about this being an opportunity to study some of our roots, our ethnic and, yeah. and ancestral roots and the holidays and traditions and celebrations that were, um, you know, uh, present for them, you know, before they got distorted by the modern yeah. world. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, one of the grandmothers, she's since the day that I first met her, she's talked about um, she knew she had Jewish family in Poland or whatever. And I just feel like when I go and I light these candles for her, it might touch something in her ancestrally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It might be something really cool. So I can't it wait could. to come back and tell you guys all about that after mm -hmm. after it all happens. And I think it'll be a really neat experience. I'm excited about it. And yeah. that's funny you say that, Brittany, because I think last month we touched on the concept of not just the inner family home and hearth structure, but the external community family home and hearth structure, which like what stops any of us from like having that within us, within our home and that connection and then being like, you know what, I'm going to take one of these days during this week. I'm going to go across the street to my neighbors. I'm going to knock on their door and I'm going to share some of my community holiday good spirit with them because they're part of my community family. Mm -hmm. so right. they food. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, For like sure. bringing the spirit of giving through food and sharing abundance, you know, mm -hmm. is a nice, is a really cool way of doing that community piece. And we yeah. forget about that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or sure. we get so busy, like our modern lives are so busy <laughs> that it's, um, it really, for me personally, it takes away from the relaxation of that generosity because I'm you know, in survival mode so much with um, working as a single mom and, you know, trying to juggle everything that it sometimes feels more of a chore and it's, and I have to work at, at my attitude about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's sad in a way, especially though, as we awaken to like the corruption of all of this, the more that we see the reality in the world that I think the more cynical and kind of like, not really wanting to participate, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but I'm of the mindset now where I'm really trying to think, well, how can I really uh, connect in with real meaningful aspects, you know, one related to my own ancestry and I can re keep it alive or bring it back into the modern day a little bit and share that with my children. How can I slow down enough to really uh, feel this sense of, of generosity or desire to give or connect with people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. I've uh, since moving to Kansas, I've had vehicle issues. It's working now. Um, <laughs> we're planning holiday mm -hmm. visit back to St. Louis, but uh, I haven't been able to like freely come and go to my family during the holidays and mm -hmm. money has been really tight. Um, and so it's really, we haven't even been able to <laughs> like, I, I don't know if I've ever like gone nuts on a Christmas budget. And since mm -hmm. my, my oldest has been alive, um, mm -hmm. they're really hooked up. They have a thousand grandparents and, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> but because of the struggle, which I'm thankful for, um, 
it really highlights how just that togetherness, um, mm -hmm. like, like the most meaningful thing with the holidays for me is, is being with the people that I love and care for. And it doesn't really matter how expensive the gift is, you know, just, um, we've had to find, find creative ways to give to those that we love. Oh, sorry. Our, our cat is, I think there's a mouse somewhere because she's like, <laughs> she's going after it. But um, I, I really love that we discussed this topic and um, regardless of all the marketing and heavy media messages, um, I love that we brought forth gathering with people because really uh, all that stuff aside, that that is at the heart of all this stuff is like, what's the point in just enjoying something all by yourself? You know, like the best thing about it is like coming together and gathering with people that you really care for yeah. and, mm -hmm. and spending that time, no matter what the cultural tradition looks like. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's like probably the best part of the holidays is really sharing it with those that you love and care for. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Wonderfully awesome. said. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and the, that's exactly right. It's about what we do with this time here on this beautiful planet that God or spirit or source or that which set all things into motion or whatever anybody wants to call it out there, put this in forth. This is for us to experience and grow and evolve in. And if that means that we have to, by the power of our properly organized thoughts, emotions, and actions take back what is important to us, which is the true care and empathy and love and gratitude that we have for and with our families and our loved ones and our community neighbors and everything that we're gifted um, on this planet, then that's what it it should be and i say we take it back in that fashion mm -hmm. and not to throw away all the other traditions like you know mm -hmm. getting a couple of gifts decorating a tree lighting a menorah or uh is that that's the right word right the candles yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. you know playing dreidel or you know like our family tradition like besides what we do with our tree where we just put like nonsense ornaments on it you know as we grow older with that um we will watch christmas movies which the rule is is if it has even one scene with christmas in it that makes it a christmas movie um, <laughs> i like to use is omen three check it out it's a christmas movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um so these are the you know what comes from us genuinely i think and that's where we should all well i'm not going to tell other people what to do but i feel like this would be the best way for us to move forward with the holiday the concept of the holidays in this mm -hmm. season yeah you know i work as um a me like a social worker <laughs> mental health counselor and a lot of people that i talk to uh are very isolated and the holiday can bring, just hi highlight, you know, in a painful way, their their loneliness and their feeling unconnected, you know, and not having people in their life. So when we're um, have family and community to celebrate with, you know, to really recognize that, that how really truly blessed we are to have it and to open and expand our awareness to those people in our community, in our environment that are alone and an extra good reason to reach out and make connection to them and extend some care, like notice them. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think as we assimilate all these things too, that we've, we've learned or come, come on to after we've come into truth or natural law or however you want to look at it, I think then coming here to share it and then not you know sharing it here and then this is going to go out to however many people are going to watch it but then in our own families too and extended families and friends they're like okay wait you don't do what wait but you do both but you don't do it. okay so it just opens the door and that's what's important because 
we can keep it to ourselves and do it the way that our minds think is okay. But I think that's part of the great work is to share. Yeah. yeah. Is to share our experience. So I appreciate Absolutely. all of you ladies very Me too. much. I'm so glad we made time to gather, especially before the holidays. It's a good time. I know. Our busy yeah. lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yes, I am so glad you guys could join or could come today and that we were able to connect. I I think that's, I just appreciate that immensely myself. Mm -hmm. um, and because I know we all have busy lives and everything, but um, does anybody have any final remarks they would like to tell the world? <laughs> I'll just one thought to build off what um, Brittany just said and what I was saying is that I when you look at this time of year you know you have all the Salvation Army people ringing their bell and there is this sense of like charity give your money that's another you know people come out to take advantage of that generous spirit and mm -hmm. I just think um, I encourage people maybe to avoid the middleman, so to speak, of the, you know, scripted uh, companies, organizations that are asking for money and rebuild, like, who's in your, who's in your street, who's in your neighborhood, who's, who do you, or your family, actual, your family, your, you know, the people that you buy, you know, that you check out, the checkers at the grocery store, like, how can we, really invest in the local community and be giving to the people that make a difference in our lives to disconnect a bit from those um, kind of what I would see is a, a little bit uh, uh, there, these organizations that are really taking advantage at this time. We don't really know what they're doing with that money. We don't know right. what, yeah. I have an idea, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with that, Leslie, wholeheartedly cut the mm -hmm. cut that middleman out, because mm -hmm. what do we need a middleman out in when when we need or when we see people in our community, our family community who are in a position of suffering? Like, mm -hmm. I don't need a middleman to mm -hmm. say, oh, give us some money every month so we can give this person, this target, who's the one who's suffering the thing. So I wholeheartedly agree with direct contact. Give directly. If you, if you want to give charity to somebody in need, walk up to them. If they're homeless, walk up to them and give them something that you think they need. Walk up to your neighbor who you think may need them and knock on that door and be like, I'm going to give you this this year because you're part of my family. So give them directly. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Yeah. And gra grassroots, grassroots, yeah. you know, organizations in, that are very, very clear, right? And local. Yeah. Sarah's mm -hmm. done it. She she donated um, and so did Clifton their books um, to the auction we did for our school, the charity auction. Mm -hmm. And it goes to the families who can't necessarily afford to have their children there, which is our family. So we were directly affected by it. And mm -hmm. we're just so grateful for her. And she's like, she didn't even take a breath. I told her about it. She's like, oh, I'll send you this and this and this and this. And, <laughs> and I got a box of stuff for the auction and the basket went for, I don't know, like three or 500 and something. It was great. I'm right. so grateful. That, wow, that's um, awesome. So Sarah actually lives and assimilates what she just spoke. That's just that's sweet. That's I love sweet. it. Yeah. And that's powerful. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. It's a huge deal. And mm -hmm. I'm very humbled, humbled by it. So that's great. I'm okay. glad it could it could be a benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, do you either of you, Brittany, do you have some final thoughts on today's topic? I've got Go one. Um like if you're in a tight spot in your life, like, and finances are an issue, that's not the only way to show people that you care. Uh, reaching out to those that you love, um, connecting with them or making space to like gather and having a meal together or playing a game, something where people are gathered around 
um, and come together. Like yes. holidays don't just have to be about money, even though money and resources can definitely make the holidays more fun and pleasurable yes. and enjoyable. But um, that's not the only way to connect with people and let them right. know that you love them and care about them. When Leslie said, there's a lot of people that don't have the, the families that I know I'm blessed to have and all these people surrounding them. So invite them or plug them into somewhere they can go. Or You're right. Great point. Great point. Yeah. I don't have anything final other than I love you guys and I really have, yeah. to, I have to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is awesome. it's, good. it's a good length. Yeah. Well, I'm love. so glad to gather. Thank you, ladies, so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay. I love you. Bye, guys. See you next time. We'll see you later. Bye, Bye ladies. See you again. Okay.